This week, I was introduced to a book by Kevin Cruz. It's called The 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management. <laughs> now, I am not the time management guru. <laughs> I don't even play one on TV, but it's one of those things that ties so heavily into organizing and health and fitness that it's worth talking about. So today on the podcast, Heather and I are going to talk about our own perspectives of one of the 15 successful traits that he brings up in his book. We're going to talk about it as it relates to us. Welcome to the show. Let's go. All right. I love this. <laughs> I have been, I have been all about time management since as long as I can remember. I, I, <laughs> I actually started, well, I wouldn't say started, started is a strong term. My friend and I wanted to start this business called, um, I think it was time, time and money or time and money management or something like that. Time okay. versus money. Anyway, it has something to do with time and money. And we made flyers and we made a little logo and we handed it all around the neighborhood and it went nowhere. But <laughs> I, we really were like into this because we were both super type A and knew that that is, those are the two areas where people struggle. And I felt like we had strengths in those areas we could help with. I also had a Franklin day planner, uh -huh. the age of, I don't even know what everyone thought I was a total <laughs> nerd because I had my day timer, but you know, I loved it and I would write everything in it and I carried it around with me and you know, whatever. So I have always been into it. And I think it is because I've always had a crazy life. I think it's because I was always doing 5,000 things at once. And so it just, you just have to, if you want to make it work. Yes. So, and I've been the opposite. Like I am, I can be the most complacent person you've ever met when I'm feeling, you know, comfortable and life is good. I can be really complacent and I can hit snooze button 13 times and I can be very reactionary instead of proactive with my time. Um, and now, you know, as, as, a, as an adult, as an entrepreneur, as a mom, I know that that's not the way that I can live my life and, and feel like I am doing everything that I want to do in this life. Um, and so I've, I've tried to implement different strategies into my life so that I can be stronger in the area of time management. And it's also been a practice of finding what works for me, just like anything else. Um, and so there are certain things that I've looked at and said, now, really, that's going to be your advice to me. Okay. No, I I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but the more we go, I love finding patterns. If you can repeat something again and again and again, or other people repeat something again and again and again, I'm going to take a bigger look at it to see if it's really valid because of the pattern. If lots of people are doing it and finding success doing it. I'm going to listen and I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. And the topic that we want to focus on today is exactly one of those. So in, in Kevin Cruz's book, he goes through all 15 secrets that successful people know about time management. Uh, a lot of them are really, really interesting and things that I want to dig into more later. But the one that when, when Heather and I, when you were talking about, you and I were talking about it, the one that stood out to us that really connected with both of our worlds in a mindset perspective is actually number 14. He says, routinely use mornings to strengthen your mind, body, and spirit. Again, number 14, routinely use mornings to strengthen your mind, body, and spirit. And we've seen a whole slew of really successful people come out with this type of thing. You know, the uh, Hal Elrod's uh, Miracle Morning. I mean, it just seems like everybody has a technique um, yeah. I think I was first introduced to it by Tim Ferriss, this idea of get up early and do something really productive first thing in the morning all by yourself. And it sets the tone for the rest of the day. It's, it's amazing. I, <laughs> I was sharing this with you before we started, but I felt like I was a genius because <laughs> about three years ago, I figured this out and I was like, oh my gosh, if everybody did this, it would be amazing. I hadn't heard of those books, hadn't read those books, totally came up with this on my own. And now I know I obviously am not the pioneer of the concept, <laughs> but there's something to be said. If you, if you 
organically come to something like that and then find out that all these, you know, gurus and people that know all the things are saying, Hey, that's something to do. Hey, you know what? If my brain is telling me and all these people, are me, maybe there's something here. Um, I started just because I read my, the book that changed my life, which is you're a badass by Jen Sincero. And she talked about meditation and I was like, ah, pretty high strung. I don't know. Never meditated before, but I was like, you know what? If all these successful people meditate in the morning and I want to be successful, I guess I better do what they do, which is similar to another episode we just had talking about yeah. emulating people that are doing what you want to be doing. Um, but so I was like, okay, I'm start meditating. And I did. And then it evolved into this elaborate morning routine to where now I need an hour and a half. I want an hour and a half, I should say. And if I don't get it, oh, Lord, have mercy on those who come around me because I cannot function without it anymore. It has become my every single, like, I have to do it. I have to do it. And I am competing with something that I just realized was a self-imposed limiting belief because I know that I'm a night owl and therefore I have convinced myself as a night owl, I cannot be productive in the morning. Why? Like I'm I'm telling telling you that's wrong, girl. Why am I just now figuring out that that's wrong? (laughs) Like, it doesn't mean that I can't be productive. And in fact, when I put myself to the test, And when I hold my feet to the fire and I try it, it leads to a great day. Here's the Um, thing though. There's a misconception that it has to start at five. It doesn't. It doesn't. Your morning routine. If you're up all night doing a project, your morning routine can start at 9am. Exactly. It just needs to be where your day starts. Yes. And to start it with intention to dig in, you know, your, your morning routine. If you are, um, you know, if you work in the corporate world, you don't necessarily, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to get up at five o'clock to go through your own morning routine and then get to work and just bleh, do whatever. It means that when you get to work, yeah. have a morning routine, right? Block out that time for just yeah. you and you are successful in that morning routine at work. Um, it, it's starting when your day starts. So it doesn't have to start at four 30 in the morning, but yeah, I'm, you know, really take a look at what your limiting beliefs might be, uh, because I'm just recognizing that this yeah. is that, that that's not an excuse anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And here's the thing. And this is what I tell my clients too, because I am adamant that they create one. I created a tool for them to use, to create one, which is free by the way. And we'll put it in the show notes, but I'm adamant. You create one because once you start doing it, and you see how much better your day, your life, your week goes, you don't need to even convince yourself to do it. Nope. It's like, oh my gosh, I know what's going to happen. I had a few weeks ago where I woke up, turned off my alarm and went back to sleep. I never, ever do that. I don't recall doing it. I was like, whatever. Obviously I really needed that sleep, but it ruined my day. I woke up 10 minutes before I was supposed to walk out the door, ran out the door. And I had a meeting that morning. I walked in and people were like, are you okay? (laughs) Clearly I didn't look good. Clearly I looked like I was frazzled. I was like, I I guess I'm okay. Yep. I'm here. And then, um, I got to the gym, didn't have a gym bag, didn't have anything I needed to teach my class. Luckily I was like wearing what I needed to wear because that would have been really terrible, but I had nothing, literally nothing. Luckily I have a backup on my phone of my music that I use. I mean, it was just a shit show the whole day, (laughs) all because I skipped my morning routine, not even intentionally. Yeah. It matters. It totally matters. And now I want to connect it to the world of professional organizing when we talk about time management, when we talk about organizing your time and organizing your space, it's all about routine and how well you can carry that routine through. So I don't care what you do in your morning routine, but if you are a busy working mom, you need to have a morning routine 
that works really, really well for you and your kids, your spouse, whoever else is involved in this morning routine. So when it comes to your own personal routine, that's up to you. This is a proven method. Give it a shot and see what works. But in the world of organizing, what does your morning routine look like when you are getting up, getting ready for work, getting your kids ready for school, getting everybody out the door, packing lunches, doing all of those things. What does your morning routine look like? How easy is it? And how easy is it to repeat? And don't you think that's where your systems come in? Yes. You know, if you have cubbies where everybody's bags, everybody's shoes, everybody's coats, you know, everybody has their own lunchbox at suit, you know, everybody has, are you the one with a color coded family? You are right. Yeah. All your kids yeah. are color coded. So, yep. you know, everybody knows what color their lunchbox is. They don't have to think they just grab it out of the fridge because of course you packed it the night before, because that's <laughs> what we do to be smart. They packed it the night before they <laughs> packed it. Amen yep. to that. They packed it. The night before. <laughs> and you know, when you have those systems where they can just grab the lunch, grab the shoes, grab the bag out the door. Yeah. But if you have to hunt all over the house for shoes, you got to hunt all over the house for coats. Now we're late. Now we're missing buses and carpools. And now you're late for work and it just falls apart. You feel awful. And how wonderful is it to be able to have a calm enough morning to actually teach your children how to slow down in the morning, how to have a productive morning. It's one thing for us to get up an hour early and do it on our own. Mm -hmm. Our kids never see that. And even if we talk about it, do they really understand the concept? So can we get ourselves to a point where we can include 10 minute story time or 10 minute meditation or 10 minute, you know, spiritual, whatever you want to do with your kids Mm -hmm. before they go off to school? Can you have a family prayer before you go off to school or, you know, whatever that is, 10 minutes of yoga or deep breathing Mm -hmm. to pull that into part of their morning routine as well. So when it comes to using a routine to strengthen your mind, body, and spirit, can you include that with your kids as well? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all about the routine setting an intention for the day and then making sure that you can follow through with it. So if you're, if you're focusing on your mind, body, and spirit, your physical world has to be able to support that. Right. So is your physical space organized enough that can support whatever spiritual, mental mind, body, spirit routine that you have in the morning? So, you know, are your lunch boxes color coded? Uh, do your kids know that, you know, what comes when and what's going to happen. Did you get up in time to make them breakfast? Are they responsible for their own breakfast? Whatever system it is created in a way so that your physical world supports the morning routine that you have. The other thing I was just thinking too, Ashley, is that if you, if you get up early enough to have some time, some peace to yourself, you're not running out the door, screaming and yelling at each other, Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) which is awesome. But the other thing is a huge part of my morning is planning. Uh So I plan the night before I look at my schedule briefly and I figure out who, where, what, right. Plan the meals, all that. But in the morning is when I really go through my day and I look at my tasks. I look at what's on my calendar and I kind of figure out what's going on. Now, if I have a project that I want to do, like organizing a closet, or I want to go to the gym. Generally, one of those two things falls off the list at the end of the day. If I haven't been proficient with my time. Yeah. I know. I can't tell you how many times I have clients that tell me I was going to work out, but then this and this and this, and this happened. And Oh, by the way, yeah, I hit snooze four times and got up late <laughs> out the door, uh-huh. you know? And I have, we have a client in common who, one of her things that she was always wanting to do was a home home organization project, but it just never happened because her day never went the way she wanted it to. And she'd get to eight, nine o'clock. And the last thing she wanted to do was organize a closet. So even, even if you're not directly relating your morning routine to how organized your house is, you ain't going to get to it if your life is a mess. Yeah. Yeah. And so to start the day out with the intention of, I'm going to do what I need to do to get my mind in the right space. I mean, mindset is huge. So whatever you're focusing on, 
I don't care what book you're reading, what podcasts you're listening to, what your goals and intentions are. I don't care if you're a journaler or not. I don't care if you're a meditator or not. Find your morning routine where you can set your headspace to where it needs to be and then get your physical world in a place where it can support that morning routine. And going on in the back of my mind right now is all the times when I have said, that's great, but in the morning, I don't have time to go work out. Mm -hmm. So how can what I say is you didn't make time. (laughs) I knew that was coming, but I needed you. You didn't make time. (laughs) You decided to hit snooze. Yeah. Yeah. Or you stayed up too late and needed that sleep because you know, I'm a proponent of sleep. I would rather if, if you're staying up till two in the morning, don't you dare try to get up at five. You are not going to benefit at all from that morning routine. You will benefit way more from the sleep. Yeah. You know, so you have to, I think a lot of times these concepts, you know, we read these books and we're like, I'm going to do this. And you like it, we walk, look at it in a vacuum. Yeah. And we don't think about it. The whole concept of Yeah. If I get up at five and I do all these things, then I can organize my closet and go to the gym. But if you stayed up till two in the morning and you're functioning on three hours of sleep, you're not going to burn it happen. You're going to store it. You're not going to be thinking clearly to organize anything. And you're probably going to wreck your car because you didn't fall asleep while you're driving. So, you know, it's just not smart. (laughs) All right. So I want to wrap up. We want to wrap up with some really practical advice. So we've talked about the concept. You've heard this concept before. So now this is what you come to us for is the practical advice, something that you can do today to set yourself up for the success, for the mindset. So when it comes to organizing your physical space to be able to support your morning routine, look at the things that you touch on a daily basis. What do you touch every morning when you get up and go through your routine? Now, obviously your clothes are in your closet, your toothbrush is in the bathroom, at least I would assume so. (laughs) But what can you do? You know, if you get up before anybody else and you get dressed in the bathroom, if your closet isn't in the bathroom, then you need to be able to pull your clothes into the bathroom the night before. So that when you go into the bathroom to get up, take care of business, brush your teeth, fix your hair, you already have clothes in there to get dressed, to reduce the, the, the stop time in the closet. And you're fumbling through and you can't figure out what it is because it's still dark or you're waking somebody up because you just turn a light on. Same thing in the kitchen. Do you have your, your you know morning cup of joe stuff ready and available to go first thing in the morning? Do you have you know, good, healthy food, ready to go first thing in the morning. So in your morning routine, what do you physically touch plan on that being in a specific place where you need it to be so that you don't have to make 15 stops around the house. You can make two or three stops and get everything that you need to have. So in the bathroom, you have everything in one place to get ready for the day. In the kitchen, you have everything that you need for you know, the morning coffee or breakfast or whatever you do first thing in the morning. And then if you're working, uh, you know, if you're journaling, if you're doing physical activity, what do you have in that space to support you? So figure out your physical routine and then put the things in the space that need to be there and plan on incorporating those things in that space. If you need to create a duplicate, create a duplicate so that something can be downstairs in your office and something can be upstairs in the kitchen and you're not trading and you're not carrying things back and forth, create duplicates, plan on it, integrate that into your morning routine and system so that you have every success under, you know, your control as possible. So that would be my, um, practical advice to creating this morning routine where you have the support that you need to strengthen your mind, body, and spirit in a morning routine. So I don't know, Heather, whatever you want to add to that. Well, and- as I mentioned, I created a tool specifically for this, and I would love for you to download it and use it because what it does is it helps you figure out what goes in that morning routine. I think a lot of times we get very overwhelmed with just the concept of what in the world do I do? You know, <laughs> figure out what fills your cup, what makes you feel the best, Um, It may not be a workout first thing in the morning. You may rather do that later in the morning. You know, maybe it's journaling, maybe it's um, prayer, maybe it's whatever, but figuring out the what 
is the most important thing because <laughs> then you can figure out how long and when and you know you can't make this plan if you don't know what you're going to put in it so that would be my suggestion where to start is just figure out what and then try one thing try two things don't try to create an elaborate two-hour morning routine you will fail yep you will fail and then give yourself some grace when you mess up just because you got up yesterday and you got up today tomorrow you might oversleep your alarm and that's okay it doesn't mean you're a failure I mean, the next day you try it again. Do it again. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you are interested, so we will link um, the, the resource that Heather has for you. We will put it in the show notes. So make sure to take uh, advantage of that. Again, it's free and you can, I mean, you know, and trust Heather so that you know that he, she can set you right. And again, yeah. the book that we've been referencing today was uh, Kevin Cruz's 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management we do not have any kind of affiliation. We don't get any kickbacks from bringing this up. It's just one of those that when you start noticing patterns, it's time to pay attention and to implement. And especially where this touches so well with a happy home, head and health, uh, it's time to start implementing a morning routine that can strengthen your mind, body, and spirit. Yep. Thanks again so much for joining. Please share this with somebody who needs to hear this information and join us again next week on the HomeBot Podcast.